Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the 30 minute CGRO webinar. My name is Zach Strudoff. So for those of you who I haven't had the chance to speak with before, I'm our business consultant here in the North American market. So if you do decide to subscribe, I'll be your main point of contact. Uh, we also have another support team that will be there for technical support related questions, but I'll be there to help with any account related questions. So just uh, wanted to introduce myself for those of you who I haven't had the chance to speak with before. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we'll jump right into it. We will have some people join as we go, but uh, everybody will receive a recording of the webinar once we finish today. So just keep that in mind that you'll be able to go back and watch it. <clears throat> Today's going to be for doing a quick 30 minute project from start to finish to show you just the kind of general idea of Cedrio and how it would benefit you as a sales tool. Uh, I'm not going to be doing specific questions for each person today. So that's what we, uh, have one-on-one -on -one sessions for after today. So I'll send everybody a, an email after the session today. It'll have five or six tutorial videos, but then it'll also have a calendar link where you can click that to book a time on my calendar. We can do a one-on-one -on -one session to answer specific questions on how to do you know certain things. Maybe it's you know how to do vaulted ceilings or how to do a split level, things like that. But the purpose of today is just to show you how Cedro works in real time to show you the user friendliness of it and uh, see how it would benefit you as a sales tool with you know a quick and easy project. So what we'll do is just do a quick uh, master bedroom, master bathroom type project. Maybe we're looking at a remodel type thing for a client who wants to see a couple different layout or spacing ideas. So um, that's what we'll do. But this is what your account dashboard will look like for anybody who hasn't signed up yet. So once you do get signed up, you'll have a dashboard that looks like this with your projects. The support contact here with an email address, a phone number, and also the live chat that you can pop open and type in your message here, send it over to our team. And all of this support is included in the monthly cost of our uh, pro and enterprise licenses. So just keep that in mind that we're here to help guide you anytime you get stuck. You know, we're not a service that does the entire project for you, but we do offer trainings and screen sharing sessions where we can help you know guide you or train you on things that you're struggling with on your own. So keep that in mind. Um, if we scroll down on the bottom left hand side here, you'll see the support tab. If I click that and click access the help center, this will bring you to our tutorial page, which looks like this. And so for those of you who haven't started a project or seen the interface of the software yet, this is what it looks like when you're in, in a project. So you'll have the main steps of the software across the top, starting with the layout step here on the left moving all the way over to the right to the plan step. So these are the main different steps right here. And within each step, there are different categories of things you can do. But the reason I wanted to show you this with the main, the eight main steps at the top is because the tutorial page will have those eight right here. And each one has its own page. So if I click, for example, layout step, it'll take us here and there'll be different videos. These are all about 60 to 90 seconds. So you know, from the basics of designing and customizing walls, adding a level, you know, creating a basement, creating a covered porch, balcony, you know, level shifter, which is like for our split level stuff. So just keep that in mind that that support tab will bring you here. And this has tutorial videos for each step of the process. And each one will answer different, you know, specific areas of things that can be done within Cedrio. So let's just go back to the dashboard. And I'm going to click create a project right here. Let's just name this webinar. If anybody's joining us from Canada or somewhere over in Europe today or anywhere else where you might be using metric, just keep in mind right here, the measurement unit. So you can go back and forth between metric and Imperial if needed. I'm in Atlanta, Georgia here. So I'm going to use Imperial. I'm going to click the check mark to continue moving forward. This is our project information page. So once we've done some drawing and saved our project, we'll be able to scroll down here and see table of surfaces, which will have the square footage of each individual room, each level and the project as a whole. The blueprints, which will have the 2D blueprints that you can customize with different, you know, it'll have the wall links and uh, door and window opening, you know, the links of that, but you can also add custom measurements and custom text to it. And then HD pictures, which will be the actual 3D renderings that are shown 
uh, once you take, you know, you, you get to choose what angle and what viewpoint you want for those, but those will be shown here where you can scroll through and save them right from here. So when I click open, it's going to open on a plain grid paper here in just a second. <clears throat> so when it opens up, this is what it's going to look like. So if you have an existing plan that you want to start with, we'll send a video on how to do that. But essentially the trace image right here, you have the layout step and right underneath it, these are the different steps of the layout. And trace image will allow you to basically upload an existing 2D floor plan. And you'll still have to draw it out, but basically it serves as a template. So you just trace over it. So you don't have to figure out where each individual wall needs to start and stop or where the interior walls need to go. So uh, that'll make it easier. And I'll send a video on how to do that. Since we're just doing a, a couple, you know, two rooms today, it, I'm just going to sketch it out starting with the layout here. So when you're in the layout with the pencil there, all we have to do is left click on whichever wall we want to use to start. The brick wall is generally for exterior walls because of the default thickness here, but you can change that if you need to, but don't worry about the brick icon. That doesn't mean that you're strictly restricted to a brick material. That just means that, you know, that's representing exterior walls. The partition walls are more for interior. So I'm going to use that. And once I left click it, you'll see my cursor here with the green dot. So I can basically pick any spot to start drawing. So let's just say I start here, draw it over, and I could get to wherever I want and left click and just continue drawing. So you just continue drawing. It's very quick and easy to do. So there we go. And up in the top right, you see the 3D view in real time anytime you draw a wall. So let's just say I do this, but maybe we know, you know what, we need to change this wall because the back wall from back right corner to the back left corner is actually 27 and a half feet. So there's two ways I could make this 27 and a half feet. I could simply left click this wall over here and drag it and get to 27 and a half feet wherever that is right here or i can just left click that dimension type in 27 feet six inches hit the arrow and now it draws it 27 and a half feet for us you know maybe this wall i know it needs to be 11 feet six inches oh sorry 11 feet dash six inches Hit the arrow. There we go. So very easy. Those are two different ways that you can change the dimensions. Like I said, click and drag or just click the dimension and type in the exact length that you need. Uh, let's say we want to add a couple extra rooms in here because the maybe the bedroom and the bathroom split right here from corner straight over. So now we have two rooms. You know, I could left click room two and you'll see the blue box around it here. When I left click it to select it and on the right hand panel, it'll pull up room two by one. I could highlight it and rename it master bedroom shows up as master bedroom over here. You know, if, if the bedroom and the bathroom had different ceiling heights, you can change the ceiling height or the slab height. If it's split level, you know, maybe I want to add one extra wall here for the walk in closet. And now we've got our three separate rooms here. So again, I can left click room three, just highlight it on the right hand side and the closet or room one, we can call master bathroom. So there you go. And we see up here in the top right in real time, the 3D view. So that's it for the layout step for the basics of drawing walls. Obviously you can click the levels and we could add a level above or a basement below. Um, you could do all, all kinds of things but you know we're not going to get into every detail of the software because it would take a couple hours to do that so for sake of time we're just going over the basics to help you get started so let's say for the next we do wall openings here so we go move to that step and this is where we're going to add doors and windows and when i get into here it's broken down into categories for us so let's just say 
you know, interior door. And let's say the, the door that comes into the master bedroom is just a traditional hinge door. So you can see they're broken down into categories, traditional, just hinge doors. You've got more modern type doors like these. I want some that have glass on them like this. So it's all broken down into categories, you know, French doors here, workshop type doors. But I'm going to use the traditional hinge door and everything has a, a sizing and dimension associated with it, but you can actually change this. So just pick whatever one's closest to what you need. And I'll show you here once I place it on the right hand panel, anytime that you want to change dimensions right here. It's your customization panel on the right hand side. So you could, you know, maybe it's a custom door because the, the people moving in are really tall. You want to make it seven feet. You could type in seven feet. You could change the width of it if needed, whatever it might be. You see on the plan here, you also I also want to put out the show the save button here. So I'm going to do that real quick and save in the top right. It's the floppy disk icon. But once this pops off the screen, you'll see that the door icon is swinging in towards the bathroom wall. So if I left click that door where the dimensions are, if I scroll down, I can change the orientation here. And when I do that, it flips it to opening outside the room now. And then direction, you see the handle on the right and the hinges on the left in the top right hand corner up here right now. And it's swinging because of where the hinges are. But if I click change direction, that flips and the icon on the 2D plan flips. So we can customize that. You also have the color pad here and you can change the colors. So you know, maybe we need the oak door instead, whatever it might be. You could change it here and you can scroll through and see all kinds of different wood and uh, just plain white colors, black paint, you know, navy blue, green, whatever it might be. There's all kinds of options, but that's that door. Maybe for the bathroom door, we want a sliding barn door. So you can go in here and see single sliding barn doors that are more modern looking, double sliding barn doors that are modern looking. These are more the farmhouse style sliding doors. So let's just say I choose one and place it here. So maybe we place that right there. Maybe for the closet, we want something that's just an opening. So just a cased opening with no door like this to make it kind of a walk-in closet. And when I place this, you can see the dimension on either side. So that's another thing that I wanted to point out to help for spacing. Four and three quarter, four feet, three and one quarter inches, four feet, three and one quarter inches. So we know that that door that frame that we just placed right here in the bathroom is centered perfectly along that wall. So same thing with windows. It's all broken down into categories, hung windows with, you know, here's no grid. You've got single windows, double windows. You've got some with grids, single windows, double windows. So it's just finding the product. That's going to be the hardest part on this step for you. But once you find the product, it's extremely easy to just place it and you see the dimension on either side to help with the spacing, like I mentioned. So place it here. Maybe we're gonna place a, one of the same windows right here in the bathroom, just a few inches off that closet. So now we've got two windows in the top right. You can see one in the bathroom, one in the bedroom. And something cool about the wall openings and a feature that we have here is I can click one of the windows and click that color pad on the right hand panel where it looks like the paint pad here. And if I, let's just say I choose interior frame and go through and maybe we just want a black framed window. It'll change one, but it'll ask us here, do we want to apply it to all openings in the house? If I click yes, it changes both of them. If we had, you know, eight windows on this level, it would change all eight of them together. So you don't have to do each one individually. So that'll help save you time. If I want to change it back, you know, maybe they say, okay, we want to go back to white, change it once, click yes, and it changes all of them together. 
So that's basically it for the wall opening step. It's pretty user friendly and self explanatory. It's just the hardest part is getting used to the the product library and figuring out where the different windows that you like. Like I said, they all have generic default sizes, but you can change those once you place them. We're going to skip the roof step today because every roof is different. That's where we get the most questions through the support, through the chat box up here, but every roof is different. So I don't want to confuse anybody by doing one kind of, you know, doing a, a gable roof today, but then somebody else needs a multi sloped roof. So we'll skip that. Once you get to that step, feel free to reach out. We'll be glad to help. But you know, if you're doing a project like I'm doing here, where it's mainly for the interior, you don't even have to worry about the roof because when you take the interior rendering, you'll see here in the 3D view that we've already got a flat ceiling right here. You can't see it's the sky outside of it. So right there, you see the, the roof. So it's okay if you're doing interior renderings that you won't even have to worry about that step. So we'll skip the roof. The exterior, I'm just going to show you really quick what it's for. This isn't for like when you see renderings on our website like this on the exterior with all of the you know bushes and trees and steps, all this. On the exterior step, you're not going to put all these 3D objects. What you're going to do is this is for putting a flat piece of grass just to give it depth. So I can go here to ground and choose lawn. And even though this person's property might not be anywhere near this size, I just want to create a big grass space just for uh, you know the purpose of giving it depth and making it look realistic. When we take the renderings, you know we can create that property line with a fence or a you know maybe they have a hedge wall, so I can go right here and do hedge. Maybe their hedge wall is about you know back here. I can place it. You see it right back here in the 3D view on the top right. And maybe they have a retaining wall somewhere. You can do the retaining wall like this and put it down the side of the house, wherever it is. But this is really just for doing simple things like that. You know, maybe putting the driveway right here on the side of the house. And you see it in real time up here. So the exterior stuff is really just for stuff like that. We are not won't spend much more time on it because it's pretty easy there. But just want to let everybody know to put a big piece of grass property here to help with give it depth when you do the actual renderings. So now we're going to jump to the furnishing step. So now is where we get into where we can, you know, really give them an actual detailed idea of what this layout's going to be like with the different size furniture and things they want in here. So uh, you know, maybe they're worried about the bathroom and deciding the layout of how it's going to be for them. Maybe they can't decide between an open kind of floor plan in the in the bathroom with the toilet out in the open, the shower. They can't decide what side they want it all in. So let's just say they start out and they tell us, okay, we want to see about having the shower in this back corner here, or let's say this back corner, the toilet over here, the bathtub against this wall on the right and the vanity, double vanity is gonna be here on the left. So let's start with the shower. So let's say for the shower, we open the catalog, it's broken down by room, so bathroom. And let's just say I choose shower cabin. I can place it here. I can rotate this. I can also come here and mirror it on the right hand side to flip which way the shower head is. So I could do something like this. That way it's on the, that side. So maybe they say, okay, we want our shower cabin to be four feet long, four feet wide. And we want the top of the shower head because remember we have a tall guy here, seven feet tall. So there we go. There's our shower cabin. Maybe they say, okay, we're gonna put the toilet enclosed in a room over here. Or we can't decide if we want it enclosed in a room. So maybe we go, okay, let's put this right here. I can say, okay, maybe we want the toilet and maybe they actually say they want just a 
kind of a four foot high half wall like shower screen that blocks it oops i'm sorry so i could go something like this and just do a shower screen you know maybe something uh this just to separate the toilet maybe they only want it you know, three and a half feet just as a small barrier so we put this in here and they say you know what no get rid of that we already know we don't want that so you can do things like that very easily to show them Let's say they know they want a six foot vanity, double vanity in between the shower and this window. They wanna make sure that it's gonna fit. So I can go to double wash basin cabinets and there's different styles. So there's ones that are very skinny with the sinks touching very close. And these are wall hung ones. Scroll over, you've got different styles with and without you know, mirrors, so single mirrors, or you know, maybe you want double mirrors, different ones like these where the sinks are above maybe they want something like this so i can take it place it against the wall and they say all right you know what we want to look at having it seven feet wide from the outside of this lit this lamp to this one so it's we're almost at seven feet already so that worked out uh, for the height to the top of the mirror again we need to make it a little bit taller because I've got tall people in the house, so it's gonna be seven feet there. And now they say, and we also know we want white cabinets with black faucets and black handles. So that way we can decide what color tile we want and all of that. But I can click the paint pad of any of our cabinets or vanities, anything like that. If I scroll over and choose cabinet, let's just say we want the pure white. And for the taps, we can say here, we'll put the black taps and handles if we wanted to. I like the white marble that's on it right now, but just so you know, you could click the tray and you see that's the marble lamp. You can go down and say you know, different styles here. If we were the kitchen, there's butcher block styles like this. If you scroll over, you've got other marble styles, you know, black quartz. Say, okay, there's the black quartz. They say, no, let's stick with the white marble. So. We just go there, but I did want to show that you can change that. Now, maybe they say, okay, we know that. And we also want to see about having a bathtub right here on this wall. So we're going to go in here, bathtub. Let's just choose one that looks decent like this. And I say, okay, we know our bathtub's going to be six feet long. So, okay, well, that, that fits better than we expected. So that'll work. So maybe we're showing the client this as we're doing it. And they say, you know what? We already know we don't like the open look with the toilet out here by itself or the toilet out here with everything else. We want it enclosed by itself so that it's kind of private. It's not out in the open with everything. So we say, okay, that's an easy fix. Let's go to the layout step and let's just add a wall right here. And the good thing is you have the 3D view up here. So you can see it in real time and we can see where the toilet's placed. We can click and drag the wall and see it all in real time like this. Maybe we know this, we want this to come out a little bit farther towards the bathtub. So now we go back to our 3D view and we've got our toilet separate from the shower now. And it was that easy of adding a couple walls and now they can see it. I can add a, you know, maybe we want a door for the bathroom right here. So maybe they say, okay, this is looking good to us. Let's just put a couple of little things here. Bath mat. And 
I mean, they want the big bath mat in the middle between the vanity and here. Do one outside the shower. And so you can also get into as much detail as you'd like. So you can you could leave this off. You know, if you wanted to, you could go in here to, you know, things like right here, towel rail. And you could add towel holders like this. So we could put this outside the, the shower wall. Uh, maybe we want to put this right here. So you could add all of this kind of detail, whatever it might be. So maybe they say, okay, we like this layout for the most part, but let's see what it looks like uh, with a realistic view with some tile and paint on the wall. So let's just say we go into materials. Let's look at some just white floor tiles for the bathroom like this. You know, maybe we want to just put some gray on the walls like this. So similar to the windows you'll see here, when I highlight the wall, I left click it and it turns that wall gray, but the rest of the walls are white. But it'll ask us here, do I want to apply it to the whole room? And if I click all, every wall in that room changes to gray. So anytime you place paint on a wall like that, you can do it all together. So maybe they say, okay, let's see what this looks like. We're ready for our first rendering. So we're going to jump to the HD visual step here. And you'll see if the first thing you're going to do is choose your environment on the right hand panel. And since we're looking at an interior rendering, I'm going to use the interior sun. This one's the outdoor countryside, but I'm going to use interior sun right here in the middle. If I zoom out, I want to show everybody that we do have the ability to change the sun orientation. So maybe they know that this window right here on this side of that, or let's say this window on the back side of the house by the vanity, this window is facing west. So they know the sun sets back that way. So if we wanted to show them a nighttime view, we could flip the sun around here and drag it down. And you'll see the background get darker in the back as I drag it down or brighter as I get up above it. So you could show different times of day like that. And you'll see on our website with the renderings, you know, you've got a nighttime view exterior of this back pool area with the sitting area. And you can turn lights on or off inside the house. But you can show, you know, nighttime like this versus the same house during the day like this. So that's what that sun orientation is for. But just wanted to make sure I pointed that out to everybody. But let's say they're ready and they want to see it from, sorry, let me get the whatever angle we want. So let's just say we want to see it kind of from back here near where uh, we're walking out of that walk-in closet. So we can look right here. I'm going to click ask for rendering. It'll give us a status. And while it does that, we can go ahead and start making changes. So maybe the client says, all right, you know what? Instead of, uh, instead of this, we want to look at having the shower next to the bathtub over here. And we want this bathroom to be in the back corner over here. And we want to see what it looks like versus, uh, you know, spaced out that way. So it's as easy as just going in here and I would just click these products and move them outside the house for just a second. That way I can go here and take the toilet, put it over here. Put our shelf over here. And go to the layout and take that wall. We could just put this one over here. And so we could, while it's, remember, it's still doing that first rendering and any changes I make like this while it's doing it is not going to affect the first one. So that's the good thing here too, is you can make changes like this. And then once you've made changes, you can take, or once you've taken that rendering, you can make changes and it's not going to affect anything you've done. So you could do this, turn the...
So there we have that. We'll put our towel holder back out here. So now our first rendering should be done. If I go to HD visual and go to gallery, here's our first rendering. So we can see our layout with it this way. Now we can see, okay, we've taken that one. Let's go ahead and take our second one with, with it switched over here. And we're gonna see which one we like better. So while it's doing that second rendering, let's jump to the plan step. This is where you can customize the uh, 2D plan and blueprints that you're going to be able to create. So like I said earlier, maybe the main thing this client was worried about was this measurement from the back right corner to the back left corner because they want to make sure they have enough room for the bathroom, toilet area, the seven foot wide vanity, a window in here to get some natural light, and then also a walk-in closet. So this dimension that shows from corner to corner is most important to them. I can left click it and on the right hand side, just like every other step, the right hand side is your customization panel. And I could scroll down here and go font size 36 and make it bigger. I could change the color, maybe, you know, change it to red, make it stick out a little bit. Maybe the client says, you know what, we, re we really like that sliding barn door for the uh, entry into the bathroom. We're thinking about maybe doing one for the walk-in closet instead of just the frame, the cutout frame without a door on it. Can you tell us how much that would be? So you, know, you could do something like this, where at the top you have annotation. And I can choose the line and arrow and maybe draw a line with an arrow there. And I could just click the text and add the text box right outside of it and say, Sliding barn door can be added for additional 475. You just put that right here. Um, you know, maybe the client is curious. Um, let's see, you know, what they might be curious of, you know, how much room they have between this wall and this wall. So I could say, okay, dimension manual drawing dimension. And I could come here, put my cursor up against this wall, bring it down to this wall, and it'll snap it into place because it recognizes we want to find walls. So it's there and I could slide it to move it over here to this spot. We have that. So you can see all the stuff we've added, you know, that, the custom text, the this here. You could also, if you're doing a full house and you want to do you know, room paint, you could color code them and you could say, you know, bathrooms, blue, uh, bedrooms, yellow, closets or gray, whatever it might be. So you could do all this, uh, the toilet area, maybe with the toilet area be green. So you could color code things like this if you wanted. And we should have our second rendering done. So here we go. So now we have our second rendering with the bathroom on the left-hand side or the right. And the client may look at us right away and say, you know what, just from looking at it right there, I know we want it on this, uh, this second option on the side with the vanity. Let's go ahead and start. So that's where we envision Cedro being useful is being able to show multiple different options of, you know, floor plan or spacing or, you know, clicking and dragging walls to move them to change the, the layout of a plan and doing that extremely quick and easy, whether it's in front of a client or doing something like this, where now you have two different options to show them when the client comes to the office. So if I close right here and do save and close, it'll take us back to the project information page here in just a second, right here. And if I scroll down, you'll have the table of surfaces. And so, like I said, it'll have each level. So ground floor with each each room on it. So if you do a, you know, a full house, if you're doing a full custom home and designing it in Cedro, you can have you know, three, four, five, whatever, how many levels it is, up to seven with each room on each level listed in the square footage. We scroll down, you'll have the blueprints here. 
and you'll see, you know, here's the one that we customized. It's got sliding barn door can be added, pointing to here, our custom text that we made uh, bigger in red there, the custom measurement here, and I could generate a PDF of it with, you know, scaling, whatever scaling you need, uh, changing the title of it, the orientation, whatever it might be. You can do that right here. Then you can also come down and you'll have your HD pictures, which are the renderings, and you can scroll through to show the client there in front of you or just getting to it and saying, okay, I think this is the option we want to go with. I can just click download and it downloads right here to my computer as a JPEG. So when I open it, it's on my computer saved now as a JPEG, very high quality. I can email it. I can put it on a flyer, put it on my website, whatever it might be, but you can see how realistic it is where you know, whatever's on the opposite walls is going to reflect in the mirrors. So if you had a picture on this wall, it would reflect, you know, you can see the door and the door handle reflecting in this one. If, if there's a window over here, you can see outside the window and see the trees or bushes or whatever it might be. So this is a good way to provide those photorealistic images to your clients and help speed up that sales process or their decision process. And our goal is if, if we can help speed up that process, then hopefully allow you to take on more projects, you know, in the long term, but also improving the, your brand image by providing these visuals. You know, it's very hit or miss whether people are offering this or not now. So if you're trying to stay one step ahead and, and provide 3D visuals and use more technology focused uh, tools, then this is what we envision Cedro being used for and how it can help your business. But uh, like I said, we will send an email out to everybody with the recording of the webinar so you can go back and re-watch it. We'll also send an email with five or six tutorial videos and my uh, my calendar link so that you can book a time directly on my calendar for a 20 minute or 20 to 30 minute one-to-one -one session where we can go over your specific individual project and help you kind of touch it up and finish it so that you can really see the, the sales effects of it on uh, during that free version. But keep an eye out for those emails. Sometimes they do go to people's junk folders, but uh, hopefully it just shows up in your inbox and you should receive those here in the next 24 hours and we'll be glad to answer any questions or help any way that we can. But hope everybody enjoyed it and hope you have a good rest of your week and look forward to talking to you soon.